Hello comic book guys and gals, and welcome to Comic Mag Musings. I'm your host, Bill Miller. Today we are starting our first in a series of six blog recordings for The Incredible Hulk. Now we just finished DC, so we're switching back to Marvel. We normally do the first five issues, but since the original title run of The Incredible Hulk only consists of six issues, it made sense to finish it. So we're starting with issue number one. So turn the volume up just a hair, turn the lights down just a smidgen, sit back, relax, and let your imagination paint the pictures as we read The Incredible Hulk, issue number one. And as we look at that famous cover with very deep blacks, we have a gray Incredible Hulk growing out of Professor Banner. And the cover says, the strangest man of all time, fantasy as you like it. Is he man or monster or is he both? Half man, half monster, the mighty Hulk thunders out of the night to take his place among the most amazing characters of all time. Part 1, The Coming of the Hulk. That's a big splash page with a Jack Kirby Hulk. And now we have a missile test site. Alone in the desert stands the most awesome weapon ever created by man, the incredible G-Bomb. Miles away, behind solid concrete bunkers, a nervous scientific task force waits for the Gamma Bomb's first awesome test firing. And none is more tense, more worried, than Dr. Bruce Banner, the man whose genius created the G-Bomb. A few more, a few seconds more, and we'll know whether we have succeeded or not. I was against it from the start, Banner. And I still am. It is too dangerous. I still say you should have confided in us, your fellow scientists. You should have told us the secret of the Gamma Ray. Quiet, Igor. Here comes General Ross. Why the delay, Banner? What are you waiting for? My men have been stationed here for weeks, wasting time because of your infernal delays. Are you going to test that blamed bomb or not? Of course, General. It's just that I must be sure every precaution has been taken. We are tampering with powerful forces. Powerful forces, bah! A bomb is a bomb. The trouble with you is you're a milksop. You've got no guts. They should have put me in charge of this test. By thunder, it would have been done by now. Oh, Daddy, don't be so unfair. Dr. Bruce Banner is one of our most famous scientists. I'm sure he knows what he's doing. You keep out of this, Betty. This is man talk. <laughs> don't mind Dad, Dr. Banner. Ever since he was nicknamed Thunderbolt Ross, he's tried to live up to it. Huh. Thank you, Miss Ross. And now, if you'll excuse me, it's time for the final countdown. Good luck, Dr. Banner. It's ding-dong well about time. Listen, Banner, this is your last chance to tell it. Tell me the secret of harnessing the gamma rays. It isn't right for you to be the only one who knows. Sorry, Igor. The formulas are locked in my room, and they will stay there. You fool, nobody has checked your work. If you've made an error, you might blow up half the continent. I don't make errors. I don't make errors, Igor. Dr. Banner, the countdown has begun. I'll talk to you later, Igor. You know how I detest men who think with their fists. And he says that because Igor accosted his lab coat in a menacing manner. And now Dr. Banner is looking out through a portal with binoculars. In a few seconds, we'll finally learn what happens when the powerful gamma rays are released. Wait, what's that? Good Lord, it's a boy, a teenager. He's driving into the test area. Igor, delay the countdown until I can get to that boy. Hurry, man. Every second counts. Sure. What a stroke of luck. All I have to do is keep my finger off the hold button, and it'll be the end of Bruce Banner. And Bruce runs outside to track down this teenager who is driven into the test area. You, get out of there. You're in a forbidden test area. Cool it, man. The kids bet me I wouldn't have nerve enough to sneak past the guards. 
And then Dr. Banner grabs him and pull, tries to pull him to safety. Hey, what are you trying to do? Make them think I'm chicken? Come on, you fool. We've got to reach the protective trench before the bomb goes off. Bomb? Meanwhile, at the bunker, not having been told to delay the firing, a finger touches the fatal button. Three, two, one, zero. There, you're safe. And now I'll... Ah! As the boy was thrown into the trench, Dr. Banner was still left outside of the trench in the blast radius. Although many miles from bomb zero, Dr. Bruce Banner is bathed in the full force of the mysterious gamma rays. The world seems to stand still, trembling on the brink of infinity as his ear-splitting scream fills the air. And he is still screaming, hours later, when... He's coming out of it now. Thank heaven. Banner, it's a miracle that you're still alive. You absorbed the full impact of the gamma rays. How... how did I get here? My name is Rick Jones. I brought you. You saved my dumb life. I figured it was the least I could do for you. You know, it's a funny thing. I'm an orphan and no one ever did anything for me before, except you, a stranger. It's getting dark out. How long are they going to keep us here, Doc? I don't know. I don't know. They must be waiting for me to die. It isn't possible to take so much gamma radiation and not have something happen. I, I'm beginning to feel strange. My head is throbbing. This must be the end. Click, 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 click. The whole world's going batty. Even this kooky radio, it won't play. All it gives out with is static. Click, 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 click. That's no radio. It's a Geiger counter. It measures radiation. Listen to it. it it's going wild. Click, 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 click. It's getting louder and louder. Faster and faster. What's happening? Click, 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 click. What is happening? Urgh. Hey, look at you. You changed. And we see the first metamorphosis of Dr. Banner into the Incredible Hulk. Get out of my way, insect. Where am I? Why am I locked in here? I want to get out. And the Hulk smashes through the wall. Holy cow, he's breaking down the wall like it was cardboard. Out. Hey, Sarge, look ahead. What's that? Men. More little men. I don't know, but if he didn't stop, we'll hit him. And the Hulk demolishes the army jeep that those soldiers were in. As the stunned enlisted men pick themselves up from the wreckage, the mighty thing that was once Bruce Banner turns in, have to go, have to get away, to hide. Like a wounded behemoth, the man-monster storms off into the waiting night. Wait for me! One lone figure follows him as a legend is born. You saved my life. You need me now. Wait, I'm going with you. Part 2, The Hulk Strikes. Like a silent dreadnought, the hulking thing that was once Bruce Banner crouches in the shadows as the pursuing troops rush by. Mustn't let them find me. And we see a rock overhang that the Hulk is hiding behind as troops run past. And thus a name is... Oh, fan out, man. We've got to find that, that Hulk. Look sharp there, don't let the Hulk get his hands on you. And thus, a name is given to Bruce Banner's other self, a name which is destined to become immortal. Hmm, foreshadowing. While well, back at the base hospital, it's impossible. Nothing human could have smashed it. A two-foot-thick concrete wall. But he did, the Hulk did it. Bruce Banner and the boy, what became of them? Could the Hulk have... But who could ever guess the incredible truth? Who could suspect that Bruce Banner is the Hulk? And we're back with the Hulk and Rick Jones. What, where is he headed for? Have to keep moving. Have to reach home. Formula inside home. Must get formula. Driven by sheer instinct, the part of the Hulk which is still Bruce Banner heads for a small cottage, smashing all obstacles in his path. Moving with unbelievable stealth for one so ponderous, he storms closer and closer to his destination until at last a dim memory from the brain of Bruce Banner tells him, The third cabin, that is where I must go. So he and Rick sneak past some soldiers 
until they get to Bruce Banner's house. But within the cabin, the man called Igor is so intent upon a secret task that he doesn't hear the muffled footsteps drawing nearer and nearer. The gamma ray formula must be here somewhere. And then, an intruder. Well, you will not live to report Igor to the security police. And he grabs a weapon and fires. What, what are you? I have put a 38 slug in your shoulder and still you advance. You, you did not even feel the shot. No, stay back. Don't, don't. You will shoot me no more. So this is what the puny humans fear. And the Hulk grabs his gun and smashes it to smithereens. And now? No, it's impossible. You, you aren't human. Human? Why should I want to be human? Rick runs in. Stop it. Don't. You'll kill him. Put him down. Help. Down. I will put him down. So. Wham. And he slams him onto a desk. Gosh, look, there's something taped to the bottom of that glass beaker. It must be what he was searching for. And there's a paper that says, Top Secret, Report on Gamma Ray Bomb. It looks important. We better get it to the Army. I'll bet you wrote it while you were Bruce Banner. Bruce Banner, why do those words stay in my head? What is that name to me? That face. He's looking at a picture of himself. I, I know that face. But it is weak, soft. I hate it. Take it away. You can't hate it. Don't you understand? This guy in the picture, before you changed, he was you. I, I seem to remember now. It was the bomb. The gamma rays. They turned me into this when darkness fell. It would have happened to me if you hadn't saved me. That's why I'm staying with you. Fool, I'm glad it happened. I'd rather it be me than that puny weakling in the picture. And he swipes Rick out of the way. I don't want you with me. I don't need you. I don't need anybody. With my strength, my power, the world is mine. As for you, you are the only one who knows who I really am. What? What do you mean? But at that very instant, the first rays of dawn appear, and with them... My head. My brain. It's on fire. What is happening to me. I, I'm changing, changing. It, it feels as though a veil is lifted. I can think again. And the Hulk slowly transforms back into Dr. Bruce Banner. It's over. The nightmare is over. Gosh, you, you're Dr. Bruce Banner again. But alas, the nightmare of Bruce Banner is not yet over. It may never be over again. Open up in there. This is the police. Part three, the search for the Hulk. So we see Dr. Bruce Banner and Rick and the army police, the MPs, come in. Where is he? Where is the Hulk? He's got to be in here somewhere. Dr. Banner. The Hulk? They must mean you, Doc. Empty. But we trailed him here. We know he came in here. Look, Captain, it's Igor, the spy we've been searching for. The Hulk. The Hulk. Get him to a doctor. He must have been in league with the Hulk. What happened to you, Dr. Banner? Why did you leave the hospital? How did you get that shoulder wound? How do we know you're not mixed up in this? Are you kidding? What do you think he is, the Hulk? Captain, we were in the Jeep which hit the Hulk. We got a good look at him. He was nothing like Dr. Banner. He was huge, powerful. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if he was a giant gorilla that escaped from some zoo. No, he was more like a big bear dressed in tatters, probably escaped from a circus somewhere. Personally, I think you jokers were seeing things. He was just a little cub scout on patrol. It's fortunate that Igor did not get your gamma bomb formula. I'll take it for safekeeping. And that was the captain of the guard talking to Dr. Banner. Minutes later, after the troops have left to continue their vain search for the Hulk. Dr. Banner, I return to apologize for my father's remarks to you, but I never expected to find to find me in the middle of a search for a monster. Neither did I. Neither did I. You're ill. You need medical care. No, he doesn't, lady. He just needs a little peace and quiet. That's all. Miss Ross, forgive me. I, I've been under a terrible strain. Rick will show you to the door. Sure, Doc, you just take it easy. 
Very well, I'll go, but if you should need me... Miss Ross, Betty, I'll call you later, after I've had a chance to pull myself together. Please do, Bruce. I feel you're in some great trouble, and I want to help. Rick's thinking to himself, oh, it's Betty now. Bah, how revolting. And she leaves. Boy, I thought they'd never leave. Now we can talk. What did it feel like, Doc, being the Hulk? I'll bet it was a gas. Say, what's wrong? It's all over now, isn't it? Over? No, Rick, it isn't over. It's just beginning. Remember, I became the Hulk when night fell and returned to my normal self at daybreak. But day doesn't last forever. It will soon be night again. And when the sun sets, how do I know I won't change once more? How do I know I won't keep changing? Into that brutal, bestial mockery of a human. That creature which fears nothing, which despises reason and worships power. Soon the sun will set again, and here I sit helplessly, fearing I may again become the Hulk. Part 4. The Hulk. Enter the Gargoyle. Let us leave Bruce Banner and his young friend Rick for a moment and turn our attention to the red spy known as Igor as he broods darkly in his cell. The American fools think I am defeated, but not yet. No, they shall soon learn that even a cell, that even in a cell Igor can be dangerous. For they do not suspect that pasted onto my thumbnail is a sub-miniature transistor shortwave sending set a set with which I shall now send a secret message to behind the Iron Curtain. We see Igor in an MP cell, and on his thumbnail is a little shortwave radio transistor. And thousands of miles away, Comrade, I am receiving a code message from Igor. Quick, let me have it. Hmm, this is high priority. I must give it to the gargoyle. But I dare not face the terrifying one. Uh, I have the answer. So this guy goes into someone else's office. Wait, why do you give me this message? Why do you not bring it to the gargoyle? You are my superior, comrade. It is for you to bring it. And he's thinking to himself, I cannot bear to face the gargoyle. There is but one thing to do. And he gives it to somebody else. <laughs> comrade, do not ask me to do this. I beg you. Do it. It is an order. So the Buxton passed three times. The gargoyle, the most feared man in all of Asia. Who is outside my door? Speak, or face the gargoyle's wrath. I, I have a message for you, Comrade Gargoyle. That is all. And he slides the message under the door. The cowardly weaklings dare not face me, but that is how I want it. Let them fear me. Someday all the world will tremble before the gargoyle. This message, it is unbelievable. In America, there exists a creature called the Hulk, whose power almost matches mine. And we see a creature with a huge head and a grotesque-looking face, much like a gargoyle. I must find this Hulk. I must either slay him or bring him back as my prisoner, as a symbol of my might. Attention, this is the gargoyle. Prepare a rocket firing sub for immediate departure. That is all. Brief hours later, the very latest model red sub cuts through the murky depths of the sea. Until reaching a prearranged area, it unleashes an experimental man-carrying rocket. And we see the rocket launching from within the sea. What's that? Our radar has tracked an unidentified missile heading this way. Unleash our hunter missiles. Within seconds, America's mighty defense structure unleashes its fantastic arsenal and... <laughs> the missile is destroyed, but I have landed at my destination safely. And we see a tiny capsule with a parachute softly landing. And now it is time for the gargoyle to meet the Hulk. And so fate twists the threads of our tail tighter and tighter until... Where are you going, Doc? It'll be evening soon. Shouldn't we be at home waiting to see... No, Rick. If I am destined to become that inhuman creature again, let it happen out in the open this time. It's hard to believe, Doc. You're the most famous missile expert in the world. You're brainy and cultured and all that jazz, and yet, and yet, due to the forces unleashed by the gamma ray, I turn into a marauding savage brood at nightfall. That's why I gotta stay with you, Doc. Without me around, you might do something awful. You might even kill someone. Doctor, Doc, your hands. They're changing. You're becoming the Hulk again. Just as I feared. 
I cannot stop it. it. It will happen every evening. Doc, keep your hands on the wheel. Look out. They're driving along in a Jeep. Wheel. Who cares about the wheel? Who cares about anything? And the Jeep crashes. Slowly, ponderously, from out of the wreckage, a head emerges, but not the sensitive, clean-cut head of Dr. Bruce Banner, no. This is the brutish, menacing head of the Hulk. What am I doing here? Got to go. Go where? Oh, my head. We're lucky to be alive. I know this countryside near General Ross's house. Betty lives there. Betty. No, wait. You can't see Betty. Not like this. Stop. And then watching them from afar is the gargoyle. My quest is ended. It is he, the one I see, the Hulk. Meanwhile, just a short distance away, Betty Ross is lost in her own disturbed musings. I can't get Bruce Banner out of my mind. Somehow I feel he needs me. What is it, girl? You've seen trouble all day. Oh, Dad, if only things were as simple as in your day, when a cavalry charge or a squad of infantrymen could solve anything. But today, with the strange, almost supernatural forces all around us, I feel as though we're on the brink of some fant fantastic, unimaginable adventure. Honey, you just need a little fresh air. Betty heads outside. Dad's right. Perhaps a walk in the crisp night air will clear my head, will drive the troubled face of Bruce Banner from my thoughts. And perhaps I can tell myself it was all a dream. There is no hope. And then, right as she turns... But there is a Hulk, and don't you ever forget it. Oh, no. She sees the Hulk and passes out. Fainted. Ah, just like all weak, helpless creatures. Hulk, let go of her. You've got to leave here. If you're found this time, they'll... Shut up. Nobody tells the Hulk. And then we hear from the gargoyle. You are wrong, monster. Turn around. Turn and face the gargoyle. And now, part five, the Hulk triumphant. Holy Hannah, who's that? Hey, look out, Hulk, he's got a gun. Bah, no puny pistol can kill the Hulk. The gargoyle did not journey these many miles just to kill you, fool. This is a different kind of gun. This weapon shoots a pellet of my own invention, observe. <sighs> the instant it strikes you, it saps your will, making you my slave. The Hulk is no man's slave. Ha. Huh. The gargoyle is never wrong. The Hulk is down on all fours. And though you seem too important to waste another peloton. Oh, and though you seem too unimportant to waste another peloton, I believe in taking no chances. It is done. Both of you, rise and follow me. Rise. The Hulk gets on one knee and then gets up. Fortunately, in the excitement of the moment, the gargoyle does not notice the unconscious girl lying in the shadows behind his two helpless prisoners. How easy it is for the gargoyle to be victorious. And moments later, Betty, Betty. Dad, it it was horrible. It was the Hulk. He came from out of the darkness. He, he was terrifying. There, there, my dear. You're safe now. But where did he go? What did he want? Or, or did I imagine the whole thing? I'll find him, Betty. I swear to you, my child. I'll find him and destroy him. And yet, in spite of everything, there was something. Something sad about him, almost as though he was seeking help. I'll find him. If it takes an eternity, I'll find that monster. And in a speeding truck driven by a driver whose will has also been sapped, the gargoyle and his prisoners speed toward the coast, racing to, their, to reach their destination before the dawn. Faster, faster. What the prize the Hulk will be. What a fantastic specimen for our scientists to study. If we could create an army of such powerful creatures, we could rule the earth. Finally, in the early hours before daybreak, the rendezvous is reached. Hurry, row faster, you dolts. Nothing must stop me now. And they're in a small paddle-driven craft. And nothing does stop the gargoyle. For minutes later, made it. They're taking off in a rocket plane. As we have reached the edge of space, now we shall level off and glide behind the Iron Curtain. But then the first faint rays of dawn touch the Hulk as he sits in the cabin of the plane, which the Reds have copied from our own amazing X-15. And as daylight bathes his brutal features, once again a startling, incredible change takes place. Where once the mighty Hulk had been, the light of the sun now reveals Dr. Bruce Banner, American scientist. The change is now complete. 
Hours later, as the red ship glides to a landing on communist soil, the gargoyle receives a startling surprise. Who? I'm glad the effect of that gun wore off. The Hulk. What happened to the Hulk? Got any idea what this joker's talking about, Doc? Not the slightest risk. Doc, wait, I know you, of course. You're America's foremost atomic scientist, Dr. Bruce Banner. That means you and the Hulk. Oh no, it's it's too unbelievable. Under close guard, the gargoyle rushes his prisoners to his secret stronghold, and then... Your secret is a secret no longer, Banner. I know that you and the Hulk are the same. Doc, what do we do now? Easy, Rick. It's his play so far. But why? Why would you want to be a monster? You must be insane. It, it's the most horrible thing in the world to be a freak, a gargoyle like me. Doc, he's crying. I'd give anything to be normal, anything. So would I. But I am as helpless as you. Wait, listen to me. I cannot stop myself from turning into the Hulk, but your case is different. I've seen cases like yours. I know how to cure you, by radiation. But although your features would become normal, your brain would suffer. You would no longer be a brilliant scientist. Doc, you ain't gonna help that creep, are you? Quiet, Rick. No matter what happens to me, even if I die, so long as I can die as a man. Then, at a command from the gargoyle, all is made ready. They set up a radiation-styled laboratory. Now, and a big lever is pulled with the gargoyle underneath a blast of radiation. And where a gargoyle had been lying, Doc, it's working. A man arises. You did it. You did it. Ignoring the two others in the silent lab, the lone figure walks to a portrait on the wall, and then in quivering tones he speaks. It was because of you that I became what I was. Because I worked on your secret bomb tests. But it took an American to cure me. And now, now that I am no longer a gargoyle, I can defy you. And all you stand for is like a man. Speaking to some Soviet Politburo official whose painting is on the wall. And not long afterwards, afterwards yes, Comrade K, we have America's top atomic scientist. We shall learn much from him. And then bursting through the door, what? How dare you interrupt when I am speaking to the Premier? But comrade, a disaster has occurred. The prisoners have escaped. But where is the gargoyle? He has vanished. Listen, what is that? The gargoyle's escape rocket. Quick, break into his office. Perhaps we will find a clue. And a rocket is taking off. Come in, comrades. I have been expecting you. Who are you? I was once he whom you called the gargoyle. But now I am a man again, no longer brilliant, no longer a scientific genius. My work is done, and so I shall die. But I shall die as a man. And he's got his hand on some sort of uh, triggering device. Don't touch that switch. While in the rocket ship above, the gargoyle set its controls for America, Rick, and set the automatic escape ejector for us. So we're saved by America's arch enemy. Gosh. You did it, Doc. You made him normal again and turned him against the Reds. Listen. That blast. What is it? It's the end of the gargoyle, and perhaps the beginning of the end of the Red Tyranny, too. Yes, Bruce Banner and Rick are safe, for now. But in a few hours it will be nightfall again, and the Hulk will again appear. So don't miss the next great surprise-filled issue. Note. Starting next issue, we will feature a letters to the editor page. Mail your knocks or boosts to editors. The Hulk, 3rd floor, 655 Madison Avenue, New York, 21, New York. And that is the end of The Incredible Hulk, issue number one. I enjoyed reading that. I certainly hope you enjoyed listening. And if you did, I would encourage you to subscribe and hit that notification bell. That way you're alerted as soon as I release new recordings. Thumbs up and comments are always appreciated, and remember, we're taking over the world one comic book at a time.